I make my entire living f***ing people. What's up, daddies? Weirdos. What's up? Do you remember MILF Manor and how everybody was talking about that like, man, if the roles were reversed, that show would never happen. If it was a bunch of DILFs on an island, that show would never get made. Well, um... Uh, imagine my surprise when I was finally shaking off all of the trauma from watching MILF Manor and then I see on my Google News alert For the love of DILF's new dating reality show, you might be interested because of your inter- No, I might not be interested, but here I am. But also, here you are, so let's just, if we're gonna be here together, let's suffer together. But one caveat, so MILF Manor was about a bunch of older women and their children all like dating each other. This one is gay. Daddy, 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 daddy. It's not mothers and sons this time. It's DILFs and himbos. Oh god! And also, somehow, it's hosted by- Let's just watch it. I'm your host, Stormy Daniels, and I was brought here by Dr. DILF, a mysterious gay relationship expert to help these singles find the man of their dreams. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not, I, It's Stormy Daniels. How? <laughs> What? If you don't know who Stormy Daniels is, she is a previous adult film star who is also currently responsible for the indictment of a former president. She is literally responsible for Donald Trump getting indicted, and she's also described his wee-wee as ugly. She will be written about in textbooks for as long as America is around. She is a historical figure who is hosting Dilf Manor. She's an icon. She's a legend. And Lin-Manuel Miranda is literally writing a musical about her as we speak. Stormy Daniels, what a name to behold. The story that she told, it never gets old. From a quiet night to a national sensation. This is a story of a woman's liberation. She's a star in the world of adult films. And with Trump, she had some intimate thrills. She was paid to keep it all hush, hush. But now she's speaking out, making a big fuss. Stormy Daniels, what a name to behold. The story that she told, it never gets old. Anyways, let's get back to it. I was brought here by Dr. Dilf, a mysterious gay relationship expert to help these singles find the man of their dreams. Now, I don't know this for sure. This is all alleged, but a lot of people have been saying that Dr. Dilf might actually be Donald Trump. President Trump, if you see this, please save us. <laughs> A gay relationship love expert? I mean, it would be a departure, but he's in need of the money, so... We're gonna have the biggest dilfs you've ever seen in the himbos that are so dumb. Anyways, that's not what this video is gonna be about. Let's go. My favorite part of these dating shows is when they introduce each of the contestants, and you get to see who they present themselves as, because it's always, you know, the people who would go on a trashy dating show. But it's got Stormy Daniels in it, so how trashy can it be? This is historical. What's up guys, my name's Tony Cannoli, and I'm from New Jersey, and I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> Does he think that he's on a Disney Channel show? Hey, what's up? <laughs> my name's Tony Cannoli. <laughs> and I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I'm Tony Cannoli, this is my friend, Freddy Spaghetti. He doesn't believe in my rights to exist. I meant Johnny Karate, and I think everybody can go comment how much they appreciate me putting so much time and care into these videos. But because of the Chris Pratt homophobic things, people say he's homophobic. And to be honest, when a man wears that much camo, it's hard to give him the benefit of the doubt. Stop. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> and I'm just looking for love in all the wrong places. But two, I always have that fantasy, you know, of like an older man, you know, and just like, I don't know, it's kind of it's sexy and hot. Well, I mean, if his role in the show is himbo, he's got that down pat. <laughs> hard to imagine somebody with a more empty brain and also a very good heart. Seems like a good hearted young guy. So I don't know. I, I, I'm just looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> I, 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 me to my therapist as they're going, you can be real with me for a second. It's just you and me. We can be real. My therapist, hey, Cooper, so you've been crying for the past five minutes. Can you tell me where that's coming from? Well, I'm just looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> Hi guys, Nate here. 22 from San Diego, currently living in Los Angeles. I have a passion uh, for talking and vocalizing my thoughts and communicating as much as I can. Oh, he sounds insufferable. He sounds like maybe the worst person you could ever be around. <laughs> I have a passion for talking, just really getting my feelings out, communicating, and by communicating, I mean talking, just saying everything I want. If you say anything, I don't give a fuck about you. It's my turn to talk. You shut up. What does that mean? I have a passion for talking. That sounds insufferable, but you know. I started writing poetry, trying to pursue music and uh, writing songs. So I've already written like three songs. And so yeah, that's uh, what I got going on right now. You wrote three songs? I, I'm, I consider myself a bit of a you know poet, a writer. I've actually written three songs. I have a friend, Shaw, this guy. All men is trash, except me and Timothy Shablagoo. <laughs> hate to hear it, hate to see it. Yo. Yo. Last month, he wrote 400 songs. 
listen to Black Diamond Eyes on Spotify by Shaw. Anyways, this guy's worse than the first guy. The first guy was just like very cringe and weird. This guy is, I would hate to be around him. Um, I work at acting studio actually down in California. So I help scout talent and I also coach acting as well. Phoenix is perfecting his most challenging acting role yet. A blonde. Hey, shut the hell up! Who the hell is this narrator? What the hell was that? That was me! Phoenix is throwing the monster his most challenging role yet. Being a blonde, he looks so fucking stupid. Right, shut the hell up, stupid ass narrator. Is that Donald Trump? Did they do a voice changer on him? Is he Dr. Dilf? Oh my god. Please, President Trump! If you're a gay relationship expert and you're trying to help these people find love, why are you insulting him? He's a handsome young man. Look at him, he's handsome. He's pretty, I'd even say. If you look at that man and then go, oh, let me criticize something about him, shut up. That's why you got indicted, Donald. <laughs> Bitch needs some warmth at night and it's nothing but a nice, sexy, thick day to keep a bitch warm. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. There's nothing better to keep somebody warm at night than a, than a big old daddy. I love that. That guy's name's Tokyo. I love his energy, and I love him. If he gets eliminated from this show, I riot, I revolt. Whoever this guy is, I can tell that he is just evil. I love him. That smile, having that like look on your face as you're walking in, that is like, I'm serving in a positive way, in a positive way. That's what they're saying on Twitter. Like in, a, like in a bad bitch way. Is it funny to say that word? Comment below, can I say serving I'm bleeping it out though, because you definitely can't say it on YouTube, but socially, can you? People were DMing it to me when I got my hair cut, so I don't know. But what else is this face? Hey, my name is Mateo. I'm 23 years old from Mexico. I moved to America around three and a half years ago. Okay, Mateo, an immigrant rising to the top. I just, I love Lin-Manuel Miranda. Again, this whole video has just so many historical and historical musical theater, just themes. First video I've ever made that had a leitmotif. <laughs> I really, really, really like to go to the gym, go to the locker room and see all these hot guys and see what's up with their bodies. I, wait, I take it, I take it back. I, I don't stand Mateo anymore. What? See what's up with their bodies. That's weird. Why would you say that out loud? Why would you Why would you admit that? I like to go to the locker room where there's a bunch of guys who are naked because they've been working out and they're just getting dressed, you know, just doing their regular thing. It's just a normal thing. And I like to stare at them and I just like to just observe and savor them. What? What do you mean? That 80 year old guy was literally asking for it. His balls were going back and forth between his ankles. I'm not supposed to look at that and love it. I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of sexy and hot. Mateo, I got my eye on you. Okay, but before we go and look at the DILFs as they introduce them, basically to pick out who their first date is gonna be with, the himbos have to like look at a box of items that the DILFs left and choose them. And this is what Tony Cannoli says. You're the best thing I found on the internet. This guy not only wears a jock strap, but he has a sense of humor. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> I can't handle it. I love this guy so much. This is so awesome. That is like a character that I would do in a skit and it would be bad acting. <laughs> Not only wears a jock strap, but he has a sense of humor. <laughs> Sign me up. I mean, he's a legend. He's literally my favorite person that I've ever seen on any show, ever. I love this guy. <laughs> Sign me up. But now let's move on and watch as the DILFs are introduced. I run partnerships and marketing for a media startup up there, a bunch of other side projects in e-commerce. I assume e-commerce means selling foot pics online. Shut up, Donald Trump. God, shut up. That's okay, okay. Oh, uh, oh, I'm zany. Oh, I'm funny. Oh, we're a self-aware show. That's so stupid. Shut up. Literally, let the trashy TV be trashy TV. Don't have to act self-aware about it. Self-awareness saves you nothing. Who said that? Bo Burnham. Being self-aware saves you nothing. I look like somebody would worship Bo Burnham. God, I hate myself. But I worship Bo Burnham, so. My name is Alex Tikas. I am born and raised in New York and a recent transplant to Fort Lauderdale. That makes sense. That man is Floridian. Not every Florida man is born in Florida but every Florida man ends up in Florida. And that is a tried and true fact. Also, what a hunk, what a what a hunk, a hairy hunk with a interesting hairdo, but I'm not gonna make fun of it. I like it, I love it. But if he says that he stares at people in the locker room while they're changing, I'm gonna adjust that. I make my entire living fucking people. What do you do for a living? I fuck. Okay, hey, okay. What do I do for a living? I fuck people? Uh, you know who else says that? Landlords. <laughs> Oh, I'm a landlord, don't be mean to me. I'm literally just steal the ball, go over there, dunk it on your mom. She asks me if I'll have sex with her in the locker room, and I will. But then Mateo's watching and it gets weird. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> Sign me up. 
Hello, my name is Bobby Knight. I'm from Boston. Did this guy just say his name was Bobby Knight? Did that did that ring a bell in any of y'all's ears? Bobby Knight? You know who that is, right? Bobby Knight! Yeah, the coach that Ron Swanson had on the wall of his office. <laughs> and that's also this guy. That's awesome. That That's what I call a fun fact, because there's no real reason that it's interesting, but it's fun. I'm glad Bobby decided to wear his formal hoodie. God, that narrator with the Donald Trump doing the voice filter thing, shut up. Because I wanted to say that one, idiot. <sighs> <laughs> I love this hair. Hello, my name is Tony. I'm from Long Island. I live in Jersey now. My day job, I'm a banker. You know what? I love this guy too. Tony, I love a thick daddy with glasses. I'm saying things and I'm hearing them. And you know what? I stand by him. Do you think I could be a himbo if I did one of these? My name is Jeffrey Mark. I am- No, it's not. Your name is Tupac Shakur. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's Tupac. Are you gonna tell me that's not Tupac? That's literally Tupac. What? Dude, we have a show with Stormy Daniels, Bobby, Bobby Knight, Knight, and Tupac. Oh, he doesn't actually look like Tupac. Let me look up a picture of Tupac right now and prove you wrong. Look at him. That's him. That's the guy. That's him. Nobody has ever looked more like somebody else than that guy looks like Tupac. Well, okay, I just went back and I looked at him again. I am an actor, multi-hyphenate artist based out of New York City. Well, okay, his face throughout all of this is saying Tupac, but he's from New York City and we all know Tupac would never leave the West Coast. Oh man, it would be so awesome if he faked his death because then he wouldn't be dead. <laughs> I could not believe my eyes. I mean, yes, yes, double yes, <laughs> exactly. Are you Kai, are you kidding me, Tony? Are, what? The vibe that he gives off is somebody with like social anxiety but also has no idea that he has social anxiety. Like his body is reacting in the way that a person with social anxiety would, where like everything tenses up and they don't know how to behave, but he just powers through. Exactly. This is the best person who's ever been on a reality show. I do not understand how he can be who he is. How does that guy get through his life? How does that guy go order a Starbucks? <laughs> yeah, I guess I'd like a grande iced chai with cinnamon dolce syrup and vanilla foam. <laughs> oh, what milk? <sighs> Let me think. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. Now let's go see a little bit from their first dates, their first little uh, chit chats with each other, see how it goes. I'm it's Tokyo, good. by the way. What's your name? Gordon. Gordon, yeah. nice to meet you. I do music. I'm a rapper. A rapper? Yeah, I no say way. that so like calm and cool, but my shit's crazy. Crazy. All right, spit something for me. I don't like where this is going. I say it like, you know, whatever, but actually I'm the fucking greatest rapper of all time. You know, I'm a rapper a little bit. I say that, but genuinely, when you look at me, you're looking at God. But then the, so spit something for me. That's not a situation that I want to be involved in. I don't want to be the guy who's rapping. I don't want to be the guy who's getting rapped at. I don't want to be the guy who's watching it. If I'm a cameraman, I'm blushing and I'm hiding behind my camera. But okay. Okay. I got that sloppy top here, but you already knew that. A whole lot of spit, no gag, bitch. I'ma do that when I bend it over, pussy hanging. But you that cut splits on a dick, give a bitch cat. Oh <laughs> yes. Hey, my name's Tokyo. Gordon, nice to meet you. I'm a rapper. Guess what? I can suck dick so good. I have no gag reflex. I'm spitting on it. I'm gonna ride your dick. I'm gonna make you come all over the place. Just right, for, just right off the bat. Just jumping right into it. Nicki Minaj or Cardi B? Hmm. I think Cardi's funnier, so I'm gonna go with that. What? what? And that is the interaction of an average Barb. I love the Barbs. I love Nikki. I love Nikki. I stand Nikki. Nikki's the GOAT. Nikki is, honestly, if Nikki isn't in your top five greatest rappers of all time, and I'm not joking, by the way, why is she not on that list with Wayne, Jay-Z? Exactly. Barbs, please be nice to me, but you got it. That was, that was, why? Hey, I just met you. Cardi B or Nicki Minaj, my entire opinion of you rests on your decision. Uh... I mean, I don't really have a strong opinion one way or the other. I guess Cardi B, I think she's funnier. Ew! 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 Cardi B! I mean, I don't really, I don't care. It's, uh, oh, so it's not that big of a deal to you. It's not that big of a deal to you that Nikki isn't better. Oh, okay. Quick question, and he would never do this, but if Jimin from BTS asked you to yourself, would you? Um, what? No. Wow, but Jimin is so sweet and so nice, so if he's asking you to Yourself, you know he really means it. And it probably means that his life depends on it if he's asking you that. So you're basically saying that you would kill Jimin if you had the chance. That's what you're saying. Me personally, Jimin asks, I do it. I stand BTS, I stand ARMY. All right, that was a tightrope walk, but uh, let's get back to it. I am matched with Alex and he is 
freaking gorgeous. Immediately, I just noticed like his eyes and his beard, and I said like, I just felt lost. I was lost in his beard and his eyes. God, Tony's the type of guy that you eat lunch with at a summer camp once, and you just don't believe that he's real. It's like, it's like teacher's pet energy, but never turned off. Like that robot politician for Parks and Rec. What a theme! How many lay motifs have we got in this bitch? I just felt lost. I was lost in his beard and his eyes. Alright, just be real. Just be real for one second, Tony. Come on. I know growing up I used to like read the fairy tale all the time, and you know, as a queer kid, you think, am I ever gonna get happily ever after? Is that gonna happen to me? I don't know, I guess this prince is looking for a king. Okay, so let's just okay. That was very sweet. He's very sweet. He's very nice. I don't want to. I'm not. I don't want to be mean. That you know when you're watching a TV show and there's a side character that hasn't really gotten a lot of attention, and then there's like an episode that's dedicated to them, and the main character like sits down with them at a cafe on a stop on a road trip to the big bad guy, and they're sitting at that cafe and they talk to the side character and he goes, I "Used to have to run drugs in pre-K to be able to help my grandmother pay her rent." And every single day when I would bring home that check from all the cocaine that I sold to minorities and privileged communities. I looked at my grandmother's eyes and I saw that I was serving her and providing for her. It made everything feel worth it. And then they get decapitated. That's the energy that Tony Cannoli has. He has the energy of a side character that's about to get killed in the episode and they're giving him that moment. And the actor, and that's, and, and more specifically, the actor who's like, this is my moment, decides to make it their moment and act their ass off. And it's just painful. I don't know, I guess this prince is looking for a king. I'm a sex worker. I have fan pages. I have platforms and I collaborate with other porn actors. This is this is what I do. And I'm like I'm I'm too old to give a fuck about, you know, what people think and I'm looking for a guy that isn't afraid. Are you like with everything that I said, you're totally cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it sounds like a fairy tale. <laughs> Wait, I don't understand that interaction. That was what? The DILF is just like being very vulnerable and like, you know, a lot of people have a problem with this and I just want to be upfront with you about it. I'm a sex worker and I don't really give a fuck. So if it's something that bothers you, I'm not going to change it about myself. And, and Tony the whole time is going, kind of giving the reaction of like trying to keep a smile. Maybe I'm reading into it. That's what it looked like on his face. And then the DILF after, you know, putting all that out there, being vulnerable, how do you feel about it? And he goes, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like a fairy tale. What do you mean? Like, in what way is it fair? That's not what he's asking. <laughs> he's like, this is a part of me, and I either need you to accept it, or we'll start looking for other partners. And instead of being like, oh yeah, I accept it, it's not a big deal with me, he goes, it's like a fairy tale. <laughs> oh, Tony, 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 what a, what a, what a legend. So, do you, do you go with older guys normally, or what's I, your... I do. He is so cute. The DILF is so cute. Oh my god. What a cutie, just laying there like this. So do you, do you go with older guys? He's so cute, oh my god. I stand him, we better stand him. We better all be on the same page that we love Alex. There's just something about this guy and there's something about him and uh, I really, really like him. I don't wanna like jump too fast because there's so many other guys here, but there's something about Alex that I really, really like. He's special. Does he know that he's a real person, that he's supposed to be a real person in this show? Does he understand that? Or does he genuinely think that he's on the Disney Channel? Because that that right there was a performance for Disney Channel, not you talking about reality. It's just something special about Alex. Whereas Joey, my king from MILF Manor would go, I don't know, there's something about April Jane. And to me, that's honesty. Cause I needed the milk, mom. Cause he needed the milk, mommy. And he said it. But there it is. That's what the love of Dilfs is all about. Just a much more wholesome version of MILF Manor somehow. What I learned today is that a man named Tony Cannoli cannot be a real human being. Exactly. I love y'all very much. Please subscribe. Wait, quick questions though. Okay, so three things. I have been writing like a lot of different short stories. That's what I do like a, I'm a writer. I do this now. I'm thinking about releasing like a collection of short stories. Are you interested in that? Also, I'm potentially making a silly little Milf Manor type song. Is a music video something you'd be interested in? Also, any of you talented people watching this, DM me on Instagram if you know how to like master music because I'm not a good singer and I need somebody to like master. You know where it goes like you can like change the levels to make the notes sound good because I'm bad. Also, way back when I had that black eye, there was this thing that I never told you and what happened